to Emerald Scientific, and here we are. Yay! There, I love Ooh, we're Washington. in Dago. What's Dago? San, San Diego. Oh, San Diego. It's like the hip way to Dim- say San Dim- Diego. Dimitri Downing here with Destiny Blanco. The Destiny Blanco. And we are pleased to be joined by Daniela Vergara. Dr. Daniela Vergara. Dr. Daniela Vergara, who's also the keynote speaker who opened this whole conference up uh, that's filled with an amazing, amazing quality individuals. It really is the, 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 the quality of the content that we've been experiencing has been quite incredible, and certainly the individuals and stuff here. Uh, Dr. Daniela, but I, w- I don't want to mispronounce your name. Yep. So what's the best way to pronounce it? You did fine, Vergara, Daniela Vergara, that's, that's good. But Vergara. you say it so much better than I do. <laughs> I mean, Vergara. it's practice. Daniela. My husband's saying her whole life or nothing. <laughs> Daniela Vergara. Daniela, Dr. Daniela Vergara. That sounds really good there. Um, so what, 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 let's, let's get right into what the keynote was about today. Okay. Were you there? Did you no, no, because we we're out here we're filming these things. We don't get oh. to see the program. We have our own show here. <laughs> yeah, no, we get to talk to everybody, but we're locked out here. So, yeah, but as so, soon as they're done speaking, we grab them. Oh. Oh. But 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 this is for the people out there in the world who missed Emerald Scientific, oh, true. Okay. Who, who weren't here, who just are in the industry and tuning in. Um. So okay, what did I talk about? I talked about diversity in the cannabis plant in general so Mm -hmm. the genome the entire genome so all of the letters of the dna of the plant also the cannabinoid genes so the genes are related to cannabinoid production and then cannabinoid compounds at least in the flower that we find in dispensaries um, they have a a bunch of different cannabinoids and terpenes Mm -hmm. Um, and then um, yeah and then i talked about you know how we are a great industry and how we're um, you know, open-minded and breaking paradigms and <coughs> yeah. so how did you get into the industry let's go go back to your journey so I finished my PhD in 2013 and moved to Colorado what was your PhD in evolutionary biology evolutionary biology I failed that one <laughs> <laughs> that's okay I failed evolution and biology. No, no, I didn't fail biology. I failed evolution. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, so uh, I moved to Colorado, and I was going to work in sunflower genomics uh, back in 2013. Mm-hmm. And at that time, they were legalizing marijuana, recreational marijuana. So I started working on that instead, on cannabis genomics. Mm-hmm. And I did that for maybe 10 years. Uh, I'm still doing research on the side because I moved to upstate New York a year and a half ago. But, um, but yeah, well, I was there in Colorado. Um, I also worked for the private, um, industry. I was funded by steep Hill and then by front range biosciences to do research at CU Boulder. Um, and then a year and a half ago, I moved to New York state to work with Cornell university at the extension Cornell cooperative extension. Um, Cornell University. Wow, you're like, uh, where'd you get your PhD at? Indiana University, Bloomington. Indiana, Boulder, Cornell University. Yeah. Wow. And so, so what is the extension at Cornell University? So, extension is a part of the university that goes and work with the people, right? So, with the farmers or with the industry, and you go and um, meet the people and try to figure out how to help them um, increase yields or. In- deal with disease or um stuff like that so the people meaning the farmers the, farmers yeah, the cultivators yes. okay. yeah exactly and processors how and how to sell yeah uh, your product and yeah exactly i like to say the people the people me people the remember zorro that no, was zorro the gay blade sorry <laughs> he used to say the people the people are with me sorry <laughs> long, long, not important it's lot, i get to go off on lots of tangents but so 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 it's incredible. You're a PhD in evolutionary biology. So that's where it started from. You said sol- sunflowers? Yeah. So I was going to start working in sunflower genomics. Mm-hmm. I wanted to learn bioinformatics and um, basically how to um, analyze the genome, which is big data, right? A genome is has 
billions of letters sometimes. The cannabis genome has 850 million, more or less, give or take. Wow. So it's big data, right? And if you're analyzing many genomes, then you have a lot of teras of data mm -hmm. that you need to analyze. So I wanted to learn how to do that. And I was going to do that in sunflowers. But at the time, cannabis was being legalized in Colorado. So it shifted. So that market. Mm -hmm. She was going to study sunflowers. Mm -hmm. Um. Why do people analyze genomes from, what, what's the benefits of that? What's high level stuff? That's a good question. Um, one of the main reasons I think is to associate what part of your physical characteristics are due to the genes, right? right? And then maybe you want a plant that has purple leaves. So where is the purple color so we can select for that plant and right. only have purple plants, for mm -hmm. example, in dogs, you have different breeds, and this one is good f to take in your purse, and this other one is good for, I don't know, herding sheep. Right. And they, right? So you have different types of dogs. So and I, I like what you use dogs for. This one goes in your purse, and this one goes to herd sheep. That's interesting. That's, oh, yeah. There's no. other types of dogs besides those two. Yeah, right? no, no, I like those. The duck hunters. It's good to use those. <laughs> <laughs> duck hunting dogs. Um, so analyzing genomes. I, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about my grandmother now and how from the mountains of Oaxaca, she grew stuff for 85 years and trying to think like how she selected what were the best onions to plant, you know? So it was more analytical. What you're doing at a PhD level to help farmers and cultivators pick the best plants, she did it, you know, every season she'd get the best seeds. But she was doing the same thing, right? Yeah. She was selecting those that were the best. You know, hunting? Exactly, pheno hunting, exactly. So <coughs> you're selecting those before it was done in uh, closets and mm -hmm. basements. Now we have even outdoors to do pheno hunting, but it's basically that. That's called domestication, and we've done it with corn and soy and wheat and tomatoes and, and, and people. your grandmother onions. And so dogs, apparently. People. And, and <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and cows, yeah. right? And, and chicken. Oh, chicken are marvelous, and they have all of these different shapes and mm -hmm. colors, and it's super cool. I, I have a vision of being a chicken rancher in Oaxaca. But I'm, I'm not <laughs> And a farm. Uh, and a farm. And a farm. But I'm not With sure I'm going to. someone in particular? I don't know. No. Well, in Diaz Ordaz, there's this village down there. Um, uh -huh. And they grow cannabis, too. And mezcal. Um, and it's not, not They don't grow mezcal, but they grow the agave for the mezcal. It's, it's a cactus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, uh, that's. Is it a big cactus or? I don't it can, know. It can be very large or, or smaller. A, it's a agave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's yeah, been. Robert. She's been to the. You've been to Desertaz. You've yeah. been to. Mm -hmm. We went to the. We have a ranch in Desertaz. Did you see it? No, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, Ain't not important. <laughs> so, so back. So, so, so you have tremendous expertise in being able to help people. I'm, I'm getting it. You know, like I, I used to do a lot of. Uh, well, that's basic humble. Research. Ten years. I mean, is it like? Oh, well, that's good though. It's humble. Yeah, it's more but, um, experience the most. Well, but it's. What I'm doing right now at Cornell is much different than what I did at CU Boulder. At CU Boulder, it was more basic research, genomic research, data analysis. And now it's more, okay, let's apply that to how to help the industry grow, basically. How mm -hmm. to help people. Yeah. The cultivators today. Yeah. Commercial grows or yeah. in personal grows. Yeah. So yeah. what what are they trying to do there? Are they trying to create like a database of plants or like a catalog or at, at Cornell? Oh, it, they, or is it like an active... It, yeah. It's research, right? It's right. research. So Cornell has a um, good um, hemp research. Um, different varieties for grain, for example, have been developed or fiber. Mm -hmm. um, lots of things on disease. Um, so powdery mildew. Um, and, um, and But what I do is more the outreach part, right? Mm -hmm. I do more of the visiting the the farmers but cornell has a a big um program in hemp so so for example you, you guys will know what are the best hemp strains strains is that fair gene variety varieties yeah uh to produce faster than anyone right well but it depends on the environment okay right? because mm -hmm. the the individuals that you can grow here in san diego are more, much different from there in New York, or even, you know, the plants that you can grow here in San Diego are much different from the ones that you can grow in Humboldt County. Yeah. Right. No, right. Of course, versus, yeah, outside versus a controlled environment. Yeah, for example. Yeah. I've always wanted to grow hemp on the coast of Mexico, 
Because I, I see all, like down in Oaxaca, I see all the pineapple growing and peanuts and palm trees. And there's lots of water, but it's also really dry. It seems like a great hemp environment. So the flower needs a lot of water. Hemp. Yeah, but there's a lot, there's a lot of water off the off thing. But I wouldn't know the first thing about which hemp plant to produce, nor would the locals who should one day also, regardless of my existence, want to be growing hemp too. But they, they need to reach out to universities or to experts to, who figure this out, you know, mm -hmm. is that. Yeah. Is yeah, this, yeah, yeah. This kind of exploration is probably happening in, in universities in Mexico right now, right? So I honestly don't know mm -hmm. what are doing the Mexican universities. I know, but I have a friend that knows. Oh, there what's, her, what's her name? There they are. Is that. They're walking up. <laughs> yeah. What is that? Yeah. Do you have a friend? Yeah, I have a friend that may know more about Mexico. Um, oh. But, um, Are you Hispanic, though? But you're... Yeah, I am Colombian. Oh, you're Colombian. Yeah. Okay, okay. I was thinking that you were from Mexico. No, I'm from I'm... Mexico. Yeah, yeah, from Oaxaca. From Oaxaca. We had <laughs> she's, from, she's Mexican, too. Where from? Um, well, I, I was born here in the U.S. Um, in Arizona? In Arizona. Mm -hmm. But where from is your family? Um, I've, I'm not sure which part. Uh, mm -hmm. which... My family lives here. Mm -hmm. your, I have a video of her coming across the border. We don't know where she's from. Yeah, I, I, I can't legally uh, say this on, on she live. Just, <laughs> she just came. Okay, so back to, so what's happening next with you? Uh, you're, at Corn you're at Cornell, you're working the extension. What's yeah. like the next year or two? Do you have any like, what's your best project? What's your favorite project? What's your next project? Okay, so I do a lot of stuff. Um, at Cornell, we developed a, a production manual, a cannabis sativa production manual. So that's really exciting. It's going to be launched soon. Mm. That has been my big project that I've been done since I've been there. But I also am part of a non-for-profit organization, the Agricultural Genomics Foundation, which aims on bringing um, cannabis science to a broad public, right? Mm -hmm. So data to a broad public. And What kind uh, of cannabis data is this? A genomic data and evidence-based data that you have in peer-reviewed journals to bring the science that um, that is producing to a broad public. I teach a course that we developed through AGF with a friend of mine, Dr. Anna Schwabi, that's around. She's around. I really want to inter uh, interview her. Yeah, she's really she, fun. Yeah, she, she's uh, around. Her LinkedIn account said she had a PhD in cannabis genetics. Yeah, that's true. That's and true. I want to, how, did, how do you get that? Because it's not... It's she did it in the University of Northern Colorado. She has pretty cool data yeah. uh, from that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's around. You should. You should. I definitely want to get, get her on this podcast. But yeah, so that's very interesting. So what? What? What are you? Are you just? Going, are you going to stay in the New York area? Are you work? Didn't you say you were working with some companies up there as well? I do consulting. Yeah. I mean, I, I do consulting. And New York's like a hot activity of like dispensaries and cultivations, and there's a lot of active action right there. I mean, it, it's going on right now. They have the first dispensary open in New York City, yeah. I think, but it's it, it just legalized recreationally, mm -hmm. right? So the first um, legal grows happened in the summer of 2022. Um, and it's been uh, an interesting uh, transition. Um, and, you know, New York City is such a powerful city and mm -hmm. um, having products get to the city and it's it's been very interesting because i feel that new york is looking at other states that have legalized and and they're trying to do um things more <clears throat> more um socially responsible and including minorities and yeah. the office of cannabis management that is uh, a legal <coughs> the governmental entity that oversees um it's full with uh, black people and latino people so that's pretty cool yeah, that's awesome yeah. It, it's going to turn on its head when federal legalization happens. Oh, 100%. Everything that we know is going to be different. Oh, absolutely. Easier. And there's going to be... You think so? Well, in, in a way, yes. They know banking definitely is going to solve a lot of issues for everybody. Absolutely. Those people that... It, it's interesting because those people that follow rules are going to find it more challenging. Those people that don't give a damn about rules are just going to love it. Those people that are somewhere in the middle are going to have to ask themselves. Which side am I on? Do, do I want to face the consequences of not following these crazy-ass rules? And there's going to be crazy-ass rules. 
And then they're going to say, well, what are the civil or criminal ramifications of not following all these new regulations, the FDA, the DEA, the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, this standard, that standard, this, da, 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 da. And they're going to be like, well, nobody's going to put me in jail for it, so fuck it. I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. That's what's happening in California right now. And I think that's what's going to happen when it goes federally legal. People are just going to say, it's like, a, they call it like, not jury nullification, but there'll be such an indifference a total indifference from law enforcement. So then what? You know, were you worried about the, the guy who works at the water department who's an inspector coming and giving you a fine because you're growing illegally? So what? I, I just think that it's very um, naive to just believe that those things are not going on, right? Like when you go to the grocery store at, I don't know, King Supers, do they ask mm -hmm. you, <coughs> what are you going to be doing with that light bulb? Are you going to be using it in your right. kitchen or in your... No. And all of the money permeates every single segment of society. So it doesn't make sense to believe or to make believe that those things do not happen. Mm -hmm. So I know, for example, that many academic institutions, they're like, okay, so if your company has a CBD side and not a THC side, then I can work with you. But do I know whether inside... It's the same person that's taking care of the plants that is being paid for, which right. is this, if it, this dollar is coming from one side and this one from the other side, does it make a difference if I'm paying you mm -hmm. to take it, right? So all of those things I think are just ridiculous. And yeah. yeah, so I, I don't know. I, are you following, and, and I, I, I want to get to your outfit because that's really I interesting, um, but are you following what's happening on Colombia A with Columbia. legalization? It's weird in Colombia because Colombia legalized medically and then the market completely got saturated and now they're trying to legalize recreationally. Um, and now we have a new presidency with the first um, black female vice president, which is very exciting. Um, I didn't think it would happen in my lifetime. Um, so... Um, things may be different and being a Colombian and growing up when there were wars on drugs that still kind of continue right it doesn't haven't stopped but in Colombia cocaine and I showed that at my presentation right there was a coca plant because um, it is the commodity that Colombia exports whether illegally or legally i mean mm -hmm. it is the big commodity it's like yeah it's gonna it's happen just stop pretending that it's emeralds or coffee or you know bananas like it has at least had two presidents right in power thanks to drug money so it's kind of yeah hypocritical to to say otherwise mm -hmm. i don't know well one day all plants will be legal and it will be more probably about education i agree <clears throat> that's just kind of inevitable. The concept of prohibition is just a broken, it's a broken model. It's a, it's a, it's a notion that originated back during like the city states of old or the castles when they had castles in, in, in the 14th, 15th century. Mm -hmm. I would actually like to figure it out, find out. I mean, I guess Adam and Eve had prohibition because Adam wasn't allowed to have the apple. So yeah, that was true. that was God's prohibition, but I don't think God that apple could have been cannabis. <laughs> yeah, I don't think God created prohibition. We'll have to check that out. But I, I don't believe in God. Yeah, well, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, he yeah, that's believes okay. in you. Oh, thank you. And that's God. good. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that was deep. Thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. We have a complicated relationship with God at Mita. Not the, me. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> Your outfit. Tell me about it. Isn't What's it going cool? on there? So, uh, the Lulu Project, right. luluproject.com, um, women-owned, minority-owned, and they make clothes to launch. And this is it, the dress that I was wearing last night, also the Lulu Project. I love it. I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's very comfortable, and I, I think it's really pretty. Yeah, no, I love yeah. the, the flowers on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they make clothing for men? No, but I'm sure that you have a sister or, I don't know, maybe... A crush on someone. That I don't have a sister. <laughs> you know, I think I know someone I can buy an outfit for. Yeah, yeah. buy an outfit and a farm, huh? That's, <laughs> what else do you want? Farm, chickens. <laughs> outfit. A beach beach property, too. 
Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, they make they have the dress that I was wearing last uh, night. I think would go really well for the beach. That's what I brought it. I'm trying to remember what you were wearing last night. Yeah, yeah. Too bad we didn't have the uh, yesterday. The Emerald Conference was doing a beach cleanup. Yeah, it, it, it rained. Yeah. I know. Oh, been nice. Well, we are we are, we were trying to keep this about 20 minutes, but we're like at 26 minutes now. So. Next time, if you come to the Emerald Conference, I'm sure she'll be a speaker. Probably not the keynote next year, but you'll be yeah. back as a, as a speaker. And maybe I can go to Arizona and I see you guys there. You're more than invited to come hang out with us. Work? Are you sign up to our website? We'll get to that. But if you want to find her, the best way is through LinkedIn. LinkedIn or Instagram or Twitter. I'm bad at Instagram, mm-hmm. um, but too. yeah, you too. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, social media is not my thing. Yeah, me neither. But um, yeah, LinkedIn is also really good. Um, and then visit um, the Agricultural Genomics Foundation website, um, agriculturalgenomics.org. Um, and yeah. Well, it sounds like you're doing some really ex- thing, exciting things in cannabis. And we look forward to your young following you on your cannabis career and your journey. Your the scientific exploration of the cannabis plant is absolutely wonderful it's going to lead to some great things so we look forward to hearing from you what those are at a later date thank you thank you so much thank you for your time that was another episode of Mira and Shaktot